This is an exponentials and logarithms question. Give it a go first, see how far you get. If you get stuck on anything, then just skip forward through the video to see my hints for each part. So we're told that the amount x milligrams of an anesthetic drug given to a patient is given by this equation. So x is d e to the power of 0.2 t. We know that t is greater than or equal to zero. We're told that d is the dose in milligrams of anesthetic administered. Okay, so d is the initial dose and it's in milligrams, and then t is the time in hours. So we have the unit for time as well. We're told the initial dose is 20. All right, so we're given d. d is equal to 20. And then it says the patient remains asleep if there are more than 12 milligrams of anesthetic in his bloodstream. So x must be bigger than 12 if they are to remain asleep. So for this first part, which says, show that one hour later, x is 16.37, what we do here is we just use this time value, put it into our equation, and then we can work out what x is. So x would be 20 e to the minus 0 0.2 times 1, and that gives us 16.37. Or to two decimal places, that will be 16.37. And that's part A done. Part B is also pretty straightforward. Show by calculation that two hours after the initial dose is administered, the patient should still be asleep. So T is then just two. We put that into our equation. 20 e to the power of minus 0 0.2 times two. And we end up with X being 13.41. 13.41 is bigger than 12, and therefore they are still asleep. All right, so now this question starts to get a bit harder. So it says, two hours after the initial dose was administered, a further dose of 10 milligrams is given to the patient. Find the amount of anesthetic in the patient's bloodstream one hour after the second dose is given. Okay, so the first, we have two doses. So the first dose is 20. And how long has that been in the patient? So that's what you want to think about. How long has that been in the patient when we're trying to work out how much anesthetic is in the patient's bloodstream. So what is that time going to be? And then the second dose is 10 milligrams. They're both being put into the patient with a time uh, interval between them of two hours. So at the time we're trying to work out how much anesthetic is in the patient's bloodstream, how long has that been in the patient, the second dose that is? Once you have those two times, you can put them in the exponential equations Add these two things up, and that gives you the overall amount in the patient's bloodstream. So the first dose, which is the 20 milligrams, that has been in the patient for three hours because you administer that first dose. Two hours later, the second dose is then given. And then we're trying to see how much anesthetic is in the patient's bloodstream an hour after that. So the first dose has been in for three hours. The second dose has been in for one hour. And then we just add these two things up and we end up with 19.16 to two decimal places. Okay, on to part D. So no more anesthetic is given and the operation lasts for four hours. Show by solving a relevant equation that the patient should wake up. Okay, so wake up means that x is equal to 12. So the, the, however much um, uh, anesthetic is in the patient, that should be equal to 12 at the instant that they wake up. So then that wake up time should be about 80 minutes after the end of the operation. That's what we're trying to show. So the hint for this part is to try and form some kind of equation so again, we have the two uh, doses. We have one dose, 20 e to the something. Uh, so there's some kind of time here. And then we have the second dose. I'll put this little square there, or rectangle. 10 e to the minus 0 0.2 times another time. This whole thing needs to be equal to 12 when the patient wakes up. But in this case, we're not putting in a time. We're trying to work out a time. So then 
we need to have some kind of function of t here, some kind of function of t here. But we can't just simply put in t, at least not for both of them, because there is a time difference between when the two doses were administered. So you want to think about what kind of uh, variable, or how can I put in t into those two boxes? And then, and then once you've got that, you'll then have to solve for that value of time. Okay, so let's say that t represents the time after the first administration. And then what we're going to do is we're going to think about how can I put that t into these two things? Well, the first box, that's straightforward, because this is the first dose. The 20 e to the minus 0 0.2, that represents the first dose. So then the time after the first administration is just t. We can just put that into, into there. This is where it starts to get a bit more complex, because this value of time, or rather, the time that's gone into there, if we were to simply put in t, this wouldn't work, because whatever time you put in there, if you put the same time in here, that's not the amount of time that this dose has been in the patient. That's the amount of time that this dose has been in the patient. So we know that when the time after the first administration, we know that when t is equal to zero for the first dose, the second dose hasn't been put in yet. And then when t is one, second dose still hasn't been put in. When t is two, the second dose has just been put in. So then t is equal to zero, or rather the time that we're putting into this expression over here is then just going to be zero. So this would be zero. And then three hours after the first dose has been administered, the second dose has been in for one hour. Four hours after the first dose, the second dose has been in for two hours. So we want to think about what can we put into this box here, knowing that when this value here is three, for instance, this value here must be one. And similarly, when this value here is four, that means that this number here must be two. Well, then what we must have in the box must be t minus two. So our equation then becomes 20 e to the power of minus 0 0.2 t plus 10 e to the power of minus 0 0.2 t minus two is equal to 12. And this is the equation that we're now solving. And if you didn't get this far, you can try solving it from here, see if you can figure out what t is. If you're still not sure, then just keep on watching. So then we can expand out the second term. So the brackets at the top become 0.2t minus 0.4. And then we can use this, oh, that should be plus 0.4, sorry. And then we can use the rule that if we were to have x to the power of a plus b, this is the same thing as x to the power of a, x to the power of b. So what that means is that our equation can then be written as 10 e to the minus 0 0.2 t times e to the 0 0.4, that's the, the second term of that left hand side. And then we can now factorize the e to the minus 0 0.2 t out. So we can take out e to the minus 0 0.2 t out. We're left with 20 plus 10 e to the 0 0.4. This is equal to 12. And now we just rearrange. We can divide both sides by what's inside that bracket. And then we end up with e to the minus 0 0.2 t is 12 all over 20 plus 10 e to the 0 0.4. We can then do ln of both sides, and we end up with minus 0.2t is ln of 12 all over 20 plus 10 e to the 0 0.4, and then divide both sides by minus 0 0.2. Put a minus in front, and then this, we can then just type into our calculator I'm going to end up with 5.34. Oh, five hours. All right, so we've got time now. What we wanted to do in the question was to show that the patient should wake up approximately 80 minutes after the end of the operation. 
we know the operation is four hours long. So if we take away four hours from this, we end up with 1.3405 hours. This is the time after the patient has finished their operation. If we convert this to minutes, so we times it by 60, we then end up with 80.4, which is approximately 80 minutes. And that is our answer.